Hi, everybody. Dave here. We're back in the workshop of new to you speakers once again. And I thought this time that we should go over what is probably the most common uh, activity that you must do with any vintage speaker. Uh, sometimes you don't need to do the electronics. Sometimes you don't need to work on any of the drivers. Sometimes you don't need any to do much with the grills or anything, but you almost always have to do something with the, the boxes. And so uh, I have a pair of boxes here from a recent estate sale that I picked up. I saw the photo, I, photos were poor. I couldn't tell what they were. Uh, I showed up there and they were this pair of H.H. Uh, Scott S15s. Now, uh, many of you may know H.H. H. Scott is, you know, probably one of the, the most classic uh, tube amplifiers and receivers and tuners, preamps that are that are out there. You know, they, this company history is amazing. And uh, we'll go through the little, little bit of that in this video. But these boxes did need some cosmetic work. And I want to show you what we do, how we do it, how easy it really is. And this is a great example of how you can turn something that doesn't look so hot, that really was probably neglected for 50 years, and turn it into something gorgeous. So let's uh, take a look at the as is condition. Uh, I've already done one, and uh, so we have a, a nice ability to compare before we even show you the work, what it looked like and what it looks like now. Okay, step one with this speaker is getting the grill out, and it's not it's not so obvious how to get them out. Um, how, in in this case, I did not have putty knife with me, and I the the guy didn't want me messing with them. So, but you do need a a sharp uh, object to get them out because there's actually a recess all the way around the circumference of the baffle here and <clears throat> the baffle uh, sorry the grill is made of a piece of masonite and it has some flex to it so you can bend it in that direction you can bend it in this direction and the the grill is actually about uh, Three eighths of an inch, uh, yeah, about three eighths of an inch wider than the inner dimensions of this little uh, trim surround piece. So what you actually have to do is you have to stick a putty knife in the edge, flex the grill masonite enough to bend the baffle to shrink it in this direction and then shrink it in this direction so that you can bend it out because the whole thing is oversized. You can't just put it in one edge and then work the other edge in. So it's a little tricky and you could risk uh, damaging this. In this case, they, they were in good enough shape. They came right out. If you needed to make new baffles, you could because it's just one eighth inch masonite. Uh, we're not gonna have to do that. All we've needed to do on these two baffles, this, this one, I really did nothing other than a very high powered vacuum to it sucked off all the uh, the dust and debris. There were a couple little paint specks on it. And um, here's the other one. And after I um, vacuum this one, I think uh, we'll probably see a little couple little paint spatter specks on this and we'll have to take a little pick and pick those off as well. But that's all there was to it. Step two, you can see there is what appears to be some mold, dirt, contamination around the cone and the foam of the woofer. There's a little bit up here on the, the mid-range as well, a little bit on the tweeter. I believe that is a result of being in the basement. And on this one, we've cleaned all that off. Nothing other than a little piece of paper towel uh, or cotton cloth and some alcohol. Wiped all that right off. Nothing to it. So there you can see the fairly dramatic difference. And this, this uh, staining here is not from the alcohol. It was actually like that. Um, 
Next, let's just show you the condition of the wood boxes so you get an idea of what the before and after can truly look like here. Um, going to be maybe a little hard to pick all this up in the camera, but here you can see we've got uh, just some general dirt, grime. There's not a lot of scratches, which is, I, and I believe I know the reason why, uh, and here's the after, and we'll show you the products that we use for that. Same on the sides. Uh, this Both sides are about the same. We've got some paint spatters, and I think that's because a nearby wall was painted, and they little paint smear right there. And, uh, you know, here's the after. I don't know if you'll be able to catch the full gloss on that, but... Uh, you can see the, the grain is uh, about a thousand times better and the glosses came out beautiful. Uh, and that's essentially the same condition all the way around. So the backside, backside, um, pretty much the same. I was just doing some testing on this one after I cleaned it up. You know, just some general, general dirt, grime, and uh, what I believe had occurred on these, and you'll be able to see it yourself, is I found some holes here that had been filled. And I believe that these had been hung. And the part of the reason I believe they had been hung from uh, like the ceiling joists of the basement, I found them sitting on the floor, but there was essentially the bottoms, the bottom uh, walnut veneer is in just as good a condition as the sides and the top. In fact, the top is the dirtiest. It's got those spatters on it. So I have a feeling these, these were kind of suspended uh, from some hooks that were in here. And then at some point, somebody took the hooks out and put a little putty in there and, and uh, tried to fill the holes. And so be it. That's, uh, I think, a big benefit for us. There you can see the hole filling. So we're going to clean the back of this up. We'll throw a little extra stain in there to get that to blend a little, which we've already done on here. Uh, but you can see we've got all the original inspection uh, and testing uh, sign-offs. We've got uh, little how to wire them up instructions. Uh, we have the original label, uh, data plate. There you can see the original data plate. And uh, these are sequential serial numbers, so that was nice. We've got the original binding post, the original nuts. This is actually a little plug that covers the RCA style input. And I thought that was amazing that both original RCA style plugs are still there. So those have been sitting there the whole time. Absolutely amazing. So let's uh, start getting out our supplies, our tools, and uh, take you through the whole process of uh, doing a cleanup. All right, we just did the vacuuming front and back. We're just working on a, uh, a towel on top of some cardboard here. Uh, did our full vacuuming. I don't see any paint spatters on here. I suspect what had happened is that they had painted the walls in the basement where these speakers were located. They never took the speakers down. They just kind of painted around them. And that's where these paint spatters came from. What I do see on here, and you might be able to see this on the camera, is right in this area, uh, there's a couple of threads that are pulled. So I'm just gonna use a pair of scissors and come in here and and shave off basically cut off these raised area where there's a couple of pulled threads and that will that will essentially make those pulled threads they're not pulled out there's you can't see it migrate into the rest of the stitching uh, but there's just that one little spot there where if you had this the light just correct there was a shadow and so I think just by trimming those back, we can get rid of that, and uh, that'll look uh, as good as new. All right, so 
In this case, that's all we have to do, the grills and the uh, easy job. Next up, we're going to clean this, these little bits of mold or dirt growth that we're seeing here. I, I assume it's mold. I don't know what else it could be in that pattern, the way it's growing. Um, uh, on the drivers, there's a little bit here. This one's clean. Uh, this, the main woofer has quite a bit. So we're just going to use, uh, being careful we don't poke anything, but we just want to get a sharp edge. So I've got a flat bladed screwdriver, piece of paper towel, and we're just going to use some uh, alcohol sanitizer. This is uh, it's actually uh, an ethanol based sanitizer. So. I'm only going to use the screwdriver if I need to get down into a, a tight crack or crevice. But we've just sprayed a little bit on the on the paper towel, made sure that area is saturated, and we're just going to work our way around and remove that. Whatever it is, stuff that's uh, that's there. Here I'm going around. The outer part of the foam surround. Make sure I get it all. You need to get down in the crevice, right in that sharp corner. Just be gentle. You do, certainly don't want to puncture anything because then you're into another repair job, which we shouldn't have to do because, to be totally honest with you, these sound fantastic. Um, the guy, I asked him how, you know, did they work? What, quote unquote, whatever that means. And he said, yes, they were working. And then I asked him, well, how long has it been since you heard him? And he said, oh, it's been about five years. So, uh, you know, who knows what can happen in five years. So there was a bit of a risk there. And of course, as I said, I had not been able to remove the grill. So I had no idea no idea what kind of condition the foam surrounds were going to be in. So I was kind of pleasantly surprised to see that they look as good as they do and, and sound as good as they do. I, uh, I should have known better and had my little uh, handheld, I have a little small Class D power amp that I have a little battery for and I can usually... Uh, use that to check things out, but I didn't do that. Now we've got a little piece of something stuck on here and I'm, I'm gonna use a very small little X-Acto knife blade and I'm gonna see if I can shave that off. Yeah, there it is. It's like a piece of sawdust or something that got a piece of dirt. <laughs> Got some other sawdust in here too. That's from my shop, actually. So I think we're we're in good shape now. Let's clean up this one. Alcohol evaporates pretty quick, so you have to work it. All right, tweeter mid-range. All right. We're good. We really don't need to do any more. You can see there's some pieces of foam uh, on the baffle surface, and those are used to push the grill out flush with this trim piece. Uh, keep it out of the recess, push it away from the recess and keep it tight, provide some, some outward force. So that looks good. Maybe one, I missed one spot here. Let's hit that again. All right, we'll take a little closer up look so you can see all that ugly looking fungus mold contamination has uh, now been removed. Nothing to it, just have to be careful. 
don't puncture anything and you can move on to the next step. You have to know what the finish is that's already on here before you begin. So I cannot tell you with 100% certainty what sequence of events you want oh, and what sequence of solvents and cleaners you want to use. You're going to have to do some of this by trial and error. Um, I determined after trying a little alcohol, first I tried a little uh, uh, standard household cleaner with some water, see how that did. Then I tried a little alcohol. Then I tried a little lacquer thinner and uh, determined that the best way to clean and remove the grime from this surface, surface of, of this uh, cabinet is with lacquer thinner. So we're going to start with that. It's not going to dissolve or remove the finish. It's going to clean what's here. And that likely means that this is a traditional oil style varnish, perhaps a little Danish oil. Uh, I don't know for 100% certain. And I'll show you how we're going to refinish it in a few minutes. But uh, we're going to start with a general cleaning. You know, hopefully we can get off things like this little paint smudge here all these spatters, some of them will come off and some will not. The ones that do not come off, we are gonna go at it with an X-Acto knife and we're gonna try to get right under the edge of the, the paint chip and we're gonna try to basically push it right off. And if we can't push it off, we're gonna try to scrape it off. And if we can't scrape it off, we're gonna end up you know, using the sharp edge of the blade and we're, we're gonna shave it off it's going to come off and if we do lose a little bit of the surface finish that's under the paint spot uh so be it because we can remove we can in the refinishing process we are going to be able to touch up places like that and resurface them so there you can see i took that little spot and i ended up having to i wasn't able to just pop it off i wasn't able to back slice it uh, scrape it. I ended up having to go at it you know, with the working edge of the blade and uh, shaved it off, but I also took off a small amount of finish underneath it. So we're going to start with the steel wool. This is 4.0 steel wool, the finest steel wool that uh, you would typically want to use on something like this, and we're going to go at it. So I'm going to just do a little time lapse here, and we'll show you as far as we get after we clean this up. Okay, we've done that first pass with the 4 aught steel wool, and we, we, you can see as soon as you wet this, it really starts to, to bring some color back to it. So that's a good sign for how the final refinishing will come off. The main paint smudge, we were able to get rid of that. I'd say we took off probably three quarters of all of the paint spatters. We could work on it a little more, but you really in most cases like this, less is more. The less solvents or the less cleaner you can use on something to get it clean, I think the better off you are at preserving the complete finish. So I'm just gonna go and chip at a few of these, pop them off, and then uh, we'll move on to the other sides, complete those in the exact same way, and uh, then get show you one other repair technique that we have to do and uh, then we'll get ready for the uh, the next step of the refinishing process I want to pause for a minute and show you uh, an example of another repair we're going to need to do. There's a little chip in the veneer right here at this lower corner. So this is the bottom of the box. 
and goes up onto the side about an eighth of an inch. A little chip out of the near, very common. We get dings. I'm going to show you a, a technique. If it was bigger, we would actually use a piece of walnut veneer to repair and patch this. But there is another technique that we can do with uh, polymer repair uh, sticks and heat them with a little soldering gun. And we can fill this and then shave it down and blend it. And you won't even know that that was there. But we'll show you that. Let me finish cleaning up the boxes. And we've got, still got to do the uh, top and bottom and then the bezel around the front. And then, uh, then we'll do this repair and then we'll keep moving. just show you a trick we need to do this small veneer chip repair. Uh, flooring contractors know this quite well. They use this technique to repair scratches in floors um, and color match essentially any wood. Um, there's also gray shades available. There's a lot more modern gray colors now, but this is kind of the, the, uh, the brown wood set. These are essentially, you can buy these on Amazon, uh, eBay, AliExpress. And these are, are blocks of plastic. They are thermal setting plastics, which means they melt when they get hot and then they when they cool off they get rock hard these are very hard i'm not exactly sure what kind of plastic these are um it's a good question i should find out the answer to that but you as you can see they come in a range of colors you want to get probably the couple of colors that are closest to the wood that you're trying to match uh, i'm going to say it's these two and so for this kit, that's A and B. And uh, there's really not much involved in this other than um, melting a little bit into the crack or into the chip. So let's see if we can show you that. Hopefully you'll be able to see effectively. All right, don't worry if it runs down the side. That color's pretty darn good, but we can actually blend colors by dropping a little bit of the other color in there. So we're a little oversubscribed right now. Uh, you're going to see in the camera, it looks much lighter. Um, and yeah, it has to do with the light reflections. I probably have to come around over here to see it's a little better match. So we're going to let that cool. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll do some scraping because we're we've got a hunk of it kind of ran drip down over the edge. That's fine. We'll address that, but we need to get this off uh, flush and you can sand this material, but we're going to go back to our trusty X-Acto knife. Let's see if I can move the camera in here. I'm left-handed, so it's always a little harder for me to, work on this side. I probably should have gone on the other side. So we'll just come along in here and shave this off flush. Only takes a minute or so to, to cool off. All right, so our, our top is flush. Again, I, I assure you that the color, well, let's see if we can change our camera angle. Yeah, there you go. That's giving you a, you're getting rid of the light reflections and you're just seeing 
color for what the color really is now. I'm going to shave off it's on this lower edge. Even your fingernail can do a little bit of shaving. I may hit that with a little 220 sandpaper. You don't want it raised. You don't want it proud of the veneer. You don't want it below the veneer. So we're in good shape there. Uh, you're going to be, unless you know that that was repaired, you're going to have a hard time seeing that. You can also do little things like take a Sharpie, fine point Sharpie, which I have Sharpies in all different sorts of colors. And you can even put little pores in there, little grain lines. Uh, the veneer on this walnut is super tight. Actually, there's a little spot here where it's a little more open, but most of the rest of the pores on this are really tight. It doesn't really need much. I may hit it with a little sandpaper here. We've got a little wood stain. This is particle board. By the way, the whole thing is, paper, is extremely thick. This is inch thick particle board. Um, sides, front baffle, back, sealed box. And you can't feel um, it now. And then the walnut veneer goes over the top of that. So uh, as you can imagine, I've got uh, quite a few different Tints of stain. Uh, this is a basic Minwax Early American. It's got a good brown color to it. We're just going to lightly touch up the areas that rub down a little bit here. Try to bring back a little more uniformity to the back of the box. Obviously, we're going to avoid the labels. We don't want to stain those. Those are the originals. So we'll just, just a really light rubbing, get it to look the way it did originally. Probably hit these, what I think are wood filler spots where they were hung. a little bit more of a paint spatter over here so we'll try to throw a little bit more material in there there's no other finish going to be applied to the back of this just leave the bare stain we don't need to seal it with any varnish or shellac or lacquer you could it's not going to hurt it just to leave it like this all right yeah, well, that sure seems like a filled hole. I get the stain to darken in there. Wood filler doesn't always take stain the way standard wood does, so that's my guess for what happened there. Next step, let's move on. All right, I did want to mention, in addition to the one little chip we had 
uh, veneer chip we had down here on this edge went to the bottom as well. I did I did spot a little piece on this corner, so I put a little more of the. I think I said before it's thermal setting. It's thermoplastic, right? When you heat it up, it gets plasticized, and then when it cools down, it hardens. It's kind of a waxy plastic. Um, I'll see if I can determine exactly what that is, but I built up this corner a little bit. The primary damage is on the bottom, so I don't believe that's going to be particularly visible. And uh, just filled that up, let that dry, shaved it off with a razor blade. That process is fairly there straightforward. Are, as you many build it up, let it cool. Finishes up, as let it there cool, are. Build it up, let it cool. When you have enough products. material, then you just come and in your exacto yeah. knife. Every company off. seems to have their in own little recipe. To get your square uh, corner. If the finish right. is in good and shape, all which it is on, on on these speakers, the, the the finish that was on there was good. It wasn't scratched. It wasn't puckered. It wasn't bubbled. It wasn't alligator. Didn't need to be removed. It just needed to be cleaned, and those paint spatters covered and re essentially refilled. Uh, I think. You know, there's probably a couple ways you could do that. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the Howard's uh, Restore a Finish. This comes in a variety of, I think, eight or nine different colors. You can buy it at Home Depot. You can buy it on Amazon. Um, what it essentially is going to do is remelt and re-soften the finish that's on here already. It will allow us to smooth the finish that's on here, fill any scratches. Because it's tinted, it's also going to allow us to uh, do color matching in places where we have uh, maybe have a little scratch or a little pucker or a blemish, a rub mark. We'll be able to fill that. This product is also best using steel wool as your applicator. So we are going to do that as well. Put a little bit on the steel wool. Rub in the areas where you want to apply. I believe the instructions say you should go one direction. So we'll always try to do that. And we're just going to start with this bezel. We'll just work our way around the perimeter of the bezel. A little bit goes a long way. You want to make sure you don't have any buildup in your corners. Because it will, if you have excessive material built up in those corners, it will. It will All right, show we're just going to dries. keep rotating. That's all there is to that. We're just going to keep going. I'm going to work the entire the entire box onto a lazy steel wool. Very light. We're not trying to rub anything off. We're just trying to provide a smoothing process. Well, it's going to be tough for you to see. Apologize for that. We are going to wipe this off after a few minutes. 30 minutes, we'll let it dry. We do want to make sure we get full coverage. Believe in follow the instructions. I think it says you're supposed to rub in only one direction. So I will try to do that. Two direction rubbing. A 
rotate to the next surface. Reload our steel wool pad. Rub and apply. Very light. Not scrubbing. It's not part of the process here. You bring the hammer down and see if I can get a better shot. You'll have to judge for yourself whether or not this product is for you. I know a lot of people use Formbees. Um, that's fine. There is also one from Watco. Uh, I believe it's called Restore Finish. Works in a in a similar way. Uh, I've just had some really nice results with the Howards. So that's what we're going to use here on this unit. Again, the finish already was in really nice condition. It was just contaminated, right? And so all we're doing is smoothing, filling. We did our cleaning. You won't believe what this is going to look like. It's going to be, it, it's just hard to, envision what it looks like unless you're right up here and of course with wood like this the real test is uh, touching it and it feels so smooth and so sleek all right so we've done all four sides we did the bezel we are going to let that sit now and we'll come back in a bit and wipe it All right, one more trick we're going to show you before we do the final process. Um, visit your local Dollar, Dollar Tree. Uh, they have these furniture repair pens. They sell them in packs of three. You get three different colors for what's now $1.25, unfortunately, but it's a great deal. Uh, you know, they're listed as. Um, Cherry, cherry, walnut, maple, this one's oak, uh, black, and mahogany. Uh, sure, you can go to Home Depot and buy them. I think they're 7 or $8 a piece. It's crazy. Um, but these work great, and you can use them to do a little graining or color matching touch-up. I'm going to use the uh, black and they have a chisel point so you can get a fine line or a broad line. I'm just going to go right into the area that we filled with the uh, plastic wax and I'm just going to try to put a little grain line in there. It's really a simple you can waxing. Rub it. So um, uh, if you've got you know, uh, a little pour line, any sort of paste wax, you can use that. that. that helps hide any. Anything um, that you've added. In you this case, I'm going to use Sharpie. the Howard's uh, I feed use that wax when necessary. That's specially that formulated just to work fine. Uh, go on top of the Howard's Restore Finish. I don't know whether or not that's true. I looked up a little bit of details on this. The main thing it has is Carnuba, and I believe Carnuba is one of the hardest waxes available. Um, it also has a nice orange oil in it, so it smells great, spreads great. Um, you don't need a lot. So we're going to do nothing more than um, put a little bit of this on our cloth. Doesn't take much. And we're just going to 
apply this to all the areas that we have restored. This takes about 30 minutes to dry, and then you come along after the fact and uh, buff it. Buff isn't does not mean work. It doesn't mean a power buffer. It just means take a dry uh, cotton cloth, or I'm, I'm just going to use another clean paper towel and go over the whole unit. So we will do that next. Time for a little time lapse. All right, we've had a chance to allow the wax to dry. We're just gonna do a final buffing now with a clean dry towel. That's all there is to it. And of course, I think it won't be fair if we don't give you an opportunity to hear these. So we'll actually I put one of the grills back on one of them already. So we'll let that one stay and we'll go hook this one up and uh, play a little Cha Fontanez. All right, that's it. We'll probably buff these again. The photos, we are going to put these up for sale and uh, allow someone else to enjoy them. That's it. That's all there is to it. Let's go have a listen. You know, it is difficult to describe how beautiful wood can be and, um, and also how it feels. And, uh, you know, this is, I guess, would still be classified as one of those mid-century modern designs. Uh, 